Good morning, Mission Control. Today, it actually is an absolutely beautiful day. It has been raining all week long. The ground has softened up a lot, so this project is going to be a lot easier uh, than I originally had thought. What we're going to be doing today is dealing with an erosion problem uh, off the back side of this building. Uh, so, <clears throat> Nuna Innovation sent me some of the cement fabric. Uh, no cost to me, so I'm letting, being up front with that. Uh, I'm really excited to put it down, though, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I, I'm excited about it from an engineering perspective. It's a great material. It's very innovative, actually. Uh, it's a roll of cement, essentially, a fabric with cement impregnated in it. And uh, we're gonna put it down on the top here, over the top. We're gonna put two strips down. You're gonna see that as we go. And uh, this is really gonna hold the hillside in here. This is all fill dirt, and it's actually sloughed off a little bit. So we're gonna stop that from happening, putting the cement on it. We also have another section up at the house where we have a huge runoff problem uh, and we're going to put some fabric down there to help with that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I weed whacked this area already and now I'm just going to rake it off and that's supposed to be good enough to do the install. So I'm here with Paul again from Noon Innovations who uh, nicely volunteered to come down and help out today. Thank you Paul. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, he's currently, what, what, tell me what it is that you're doing. What? Doing a lock-in trench, there are several ways to do it. This is the most effective way for shingling the concrete cloth on the bank for stabilization, okay. for erosion control. So essentially you dig a trench, trench and then roll the fabric into down it. to it. And I'd like to see about a four or five inch ditch. And primarily one, it gives us some body down that we're anchoring. Two, it cuts off surface water that's going to be running across your ground and if that's usually inch or two into the soil and if you don't get it underneath you have the, just going to uh, run underneath, underneath the cloth exactly yeah okay so all we're doing is just simple lock in trench okay. and then we will put the cloth down and then backfill and backfill back onto it yep. now uh, we spoke earlier we kind of did a little game plan you can install this lengthwise and shingle it. You yeah. can install it uh, down this way and shingle it yeah. over the top of each other, but exactly. shingling is very important. Correct, because that gives us a perimeter of two to three inches of the overlap. Okay. And that way we have a sealed joint, same thing. We want to make sure we have a waterproof system all the way down. Okay. So when the water comes, hits it, will roll down and it will be two to three inches above the next shingle. So it just keeps going down, down. just like a roof. Yeah. So uh, you were telling me last time you came here that uh, this is really useful, not just for this type of application, but for like people have runoff ditches or mm -hmm. that have cement already down. Yeah. They, they can save thousands of dollars by putting the cement cloth down and get quite a few more years. What was the type of trench you called it? Or? Well, the, if you have traditional shot creeks or concretes, Water gets into them as they age, as they then freeze in the winter, they start popping off and yeah. getting cracks and they lose their effectiveness of why you have the ditch. Okay. Uh, you can lay the cloth over existing ones and fix them without having to remove it. But primarily, those systems, shock creeks are good for six to eight years. Uh, concretes should normally, we you know, get about 10 to 15 years and the same thing they start losing the matrix off the top that's your cream uh, and then water gets down gotcha uh, and depend on your environments uh, but areas that have free thaw cycles have bigger problems okay cloth because the that core we were talking about having that primarily mesh in there that works as, uh, as a Rip stop, and but it also expands and contracts and keeps that from cracking. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, so it's more like a composite yeah, material. Exactly. Like fiberglass or carbon fiber yeah. for the aerospace guys yeah. out there. Uh, cool. All right, so I guess I better stop talking so we can work, huh? Yeah. Okay, so there's our first first section, and we're actually going to do two more sections down, 
all the way and then another roll that way and shingle everything together. Pretty easy to work with. I could pull this by myself once it was out, move it in place. So definitely something two man recommended, one man could do. Hardest thing is moving the rolls before they're, they're unrolled. But I'm gonna keep going and get everything rolled out here. We just got the first top row done here and Paul is setting in uh, some wood stakes or wood, wood nails, what are they called? Timber nails? Timber spikes. Timber spikes, just using timber spikes to secure uh, the lip in here at the top in the, uh, the trench and to also secure the overlap. We did a, about a six inch overlap uh, in between the two. And now we're gonna start rolling down the hill here. Uh, we'll get the next one, move it down, shingle it, secure it in place as well. I can't get any funny. Oh, this is a good opportunity for me to take a quick breather and tell you guys more about this, uh, this cement fabric here. So on the top side is a woven mesh that's impregnated with uh, cement. On the back side is uh, some pretty heavy duty PVC. So there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to put this in. You want the cloth side up uh, and the PVC side, PVC side down. So this is gonna be a really good water seal for us. And, the reason we're doing this on this hillside is because this is all fill dirt. When we excavated here, we moved 10 feet of fill dirt from uh, one side where there was a hill to this low area to flatten it all out. So it used to be hill and low, and then we brought it all down like this. And this whole area was sloughing off because how much water was back here. We do have a French drain up top. It has three drain points off the hill, and it was still sloughing. So we're putting this here, uh, even though the grass and stuff was starting to grow, this is a really big security blanket because if this hillside sloughs off enough, it actually chews up into the building and then we have a major problem. So uh, this is our security blanket, if you will, uh, to help keep the building nice and safe. So you just, you get your few inches overlap here and bring it in and then we're putting uh, the timber stakes in just temporarily to hold it. And what do you do, Paul, you go through and you put sealant? We will run two beads of sealant on it. One bead, we'll, when we flip up, we'll run on the outside edge and then we run the other bead on the edge here. So when you put it down, it seals up. Seals up, you have two waterproof seams uh -huh. and your screw goes in between them. And then you said 12 to 18 inches on center for yep. the screws? Yep. Is it just like sheetrock screws or? Uh, they're a stainless steel okay. uh, metal screw with has a like a washer head. on the top? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's the game plan. We got one more roll to put out and then we'll start the sealing and the screwing it all together. And then the last thing is just hydrate. We just come out with a hose and right spray it. So it's pretty cool. One of the things we're gonna do is put a lock-in trench on each of the ends here. We don't have much of a water problem over here. We don't have it. And we roll this fabric out where we have the water problem at. So what we wanna do is dig a lock-in trench here so that water can't get underneath of the cement this way or run in and he rode underneath it. Okay, first uh, top side has been sealed. Paul's coming behind me to screw it in. And then uh, you can see, in order for us to reach, we've, we've messed up our lower section, but that's okay. When we go back through, I'll just reset it and seal it, and then we'll screw it all in. Let's pour some concrete. Oh wait, we don't have to. We just get to spray it. So this stuff drives white. Yep. Just just like a normal concrete. Yep. See that white band? Yep. That's why it should. Okay, that's what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. So how long do you have to hydrate it for? Well, 
We will hydrate it probably three to four times. Okay. And one, we've got to get it down to the PVC. Okay. The biggest problem people have usually done is that they have not hydrated it enough. They're afraid they're going to wash the cement out. Oh, okay. But you don't have to be worried about washing cement out with this stuff. No. I see the powder is coming off of it, but that's just top powder. Yeah. And the, the mesh is so fine that the concrete can't move. Yeah. So we just got started hydrating uh, the back side of the building there. And now I'm taking two more rolls out to our field, our pasture, where we have a fairly steep hill off of the house in the pool area. And where the, this is the first world problem, where the pool drains, we have a huge ditch that's been created uh, because of erosion. And this is a perfect case for using this material. This is one of its main primary uses. So I'm excited to get out there and uh, get it all put together. It should be pretty easy. We're gonna lay two rolls out. Uh, Paul's gonna be over there hydrating and I'll get this one done. By the time he's done hydrating there, we should be able to hydrate over here. So that's the game plan right now. Things are going pretty smooth. It's a beautiful day. I'm really, really grateful for uh, Nuna Innovations and what they sent me here. I think this is a great product. Um, it's really, really is innovative. Uh, now they're a distributor of it. They didn't make it, uh, but apparently it was two graduate students that figured out how to build or to make this stuff. And uh, they did it as part of a Britain uh, military. Uh, hello to all of you Brits over there. Uh, uh, what was it? It's like a competition to see who could make some innovative, quick to deploy, uh, easy to use uh, shelter fabric. And they created it, they won the competition, and, whoops, there's another one, another one connected. And now, it was originally used in uh, essentially their blow up shelters, uh, which I would love to get one of. Uh, but, uh, and now they, they sell thousands and thousands of feet of this stuff as just um, for erosion control and stuff like what we're doing here. So pretty cool story. Neat how just a couple graduate students thinking outside the box came up with a better solution than probably major companies out there. So that's neat. Anyway, well, I'm getting the gate open here so I can get the tractor through on a golf ball. And... Uh, take out this fabric.